A very warm welcome to all. In this lecture, we'll be discussing about the digestive gland in gastrointestinal tract. These are the glands which are associated with the alimentary canal and helps in digestion. So before starting with the study of digestive gland, we need to know what is a gland. So a gland refers to a specialized group of cells in animal that secrete or su synthesize substance which are directly released in either blood. Therefore, such glands are known as endocrine gland. And if their secretions or their synthesized substances are released in a cavity, then they are known as exocrine gland. So talking about digestive gland, these are both endocrine as well as exocrine gland and they help in digestion. So digestive glands are the glands that are associated with the alimentary canal and whose secretion help in digestion. In our body, there are five different types of digestive glands. They are salivary gland, gastric gland, intestinal gland, liver and pancreas. And in this lecture, we shall be discussing about each one of them in detail. Starting off with the first digestive gland, that is the salivary gland. Three pair of salivary glands are located outside the buccal cavity and secrete saliva into the buccal cavity. These three glands are parotid gland, sublingual gland and submandibular gland. These are present outside the buccal cavity but they pour their secretions into the oral cavity. These are paired gland. Each one of them is a paired gland whether it is a parotid gland, sublingual gland and submandibular gland. They are made up of bipyrphite and lobulated glandular path. That means they are made up of two separate lobe. So they are also known as bilobulated structure or bilobed structure. It is the glandular part that secretes saliva. Saliva contains starch splitting amylase enzyme. So saliva is important because the digestion start from mouth itself as the saliva contains enzyme amylase which is very important for splitting of starch. This is MCQ question. Which enzyme help in splitting of starch or what is the function of amylase? It is the splitting of starch. Functions of saliva. There are many functions of saliva. Some of them are being discussed here. The first and foremost function is to help in chewing and swallowing of food. Helps in chemical digestion because it contains salivary amylase which is important for uh, breakdown of starch. So helps in chemical digestion. It helps in providing lubricating effect by moisturizing the inside layer of the mouth and therefore produce or creates a conducive environment for creating a smoother speech. Cleaning effect. It washes away all the food debris and the bacteria which are remaining in the mouth after we have our meal. It also provides solvent effect as it dissolves food and allow the tongue to taste the food. Saliva has some of the antibacterial effect as it contains MCQ question, lysozyme, peroxidase and lactoferrin. These three lysozyme, peroxidase and lactoferrin help fight against all the pathogenic microorganisms present in the oral cavity. Saliva helps in uh, buffering effect in as it provides pH conducive pH level which prevent sudden changes in the pH and allows all the structures inside the oral cavity to work 
in proper function. It supplies mineral including calcium and phosphorus to the teeth. It is one of the major suppliers of calcium and phosphorus to the teeth. It is again MCQ question. Composition of saliva it is very important. 1 to 1.5 liters of saliva is secreted daily. This is MCQ question in an adult. The pH of saliva is slightly acidic, which is 6.7 to 6.8. Mostly consists of water, which is 99%. And the rest 1% is constituted by different salt of sodium, potassium, chloride ion, and bicarbonate ion derived from the blood plasma. There are different serous fluid, for example, albumin, globulin, and potassium thiocyanate, which helps in antibody formation. There are epithelial debris. Uh, these are washed off epithelial cells or dead cells. Mucin, which is uh, a family of high molecular weight, molecular weight, heavily glycosylated proteins. which are produced in epithelial cells. It also contains antimicrobial substance as we had already discussed, lysosome, peroxidase. It also contains enzyme tialin, which is important for pre-digestion of starch. This is again MCQ question. What is the function of tialin? It is pre-digestion of starch. So talking about the salivary gland in detail, as we discussed, there are three in number, parotid, submandibular and sublingual. So we'll be discussing parotid first. It is, uh, one, it is present, it is a paired gland one pair is present below the pinna pinna is the external ear as we can see below the external ear parotid gland is present it is tubulo acinar gland which means uh, the tubular gland they have secretory portion in their tubular structure whereas in acinar there are different uh, cells which are arranged as expanded ovoids or spheres which pose their secretion into the central lumen connected into ductal system of the gland. It is one of the largest glands. This is again MCQ question. Present below the pinna and pose its secretion through Stenson's duct. This is important MCQ question. How does parotid pours its secretion it pours its secretion through stenson's duct and where does this duct open it opens in vestibule vestibule is the region which is uh, with the gum and teeth on one side and cheek on the other side the space between them is referred to as vestibule so it opens in vestibule near the second upper molar it is supplied by ninth cranial nerve Cranial nerve are the set of uh, 12 pair of nerves which directly arise from the brain. Those are known as the cranial nerve and it is supplied by ninth cranial nerve. It is again MCQ question. Parotid glands secrete maximum salivary amylase. So whatever the saliva which is secreted by parotid gland, it has got maximum salivary amylase. And we know that salivary amylase is very important for uh, converting starch into simpler form very important mcq question viral infection of parotid glands cause mumps this is very very important what are mumps the viral infection of parotid gland of this region whenever it swells or it gets infected it is known as mumps the second 
salivary gland is also known as the submandibular or submaxillary why submaxillary or submandibular because it is present at the junction of upper and lower jaw so it is known as submandibular or submaxillary gland it is again a paired gland one pair is present in the oral cavity at the junction of upper and lower jaw it is a zero mucus gland that means a gland in which it is a zero mucus gland that means uh, it is a gland in which some cells are secretory and some are mucus uh, glands with the cell that secrete fluid intermediate varying between watery to more viscous mucoid substances so those are known as zero mucus gland this is again mcq question present at the junction of upper and lower jaw pores secretion by wharton's duct this is again mcq question open near lower central incisor this is again mcq question where does uh, wharton's duct open it opens near lower central incisors it produce 75 percent of the saliva this is again mcq question uh what is the percentage of saliva produced by submandibular or submaxillary gland it is 75 percent of the saliva it is supplied by seventh cranial nerve again this is mcq question which cranial nerve supplies submandibular gland it is seventh cranial nerve sublingual gland this is the third of the salivary gland present in the oral cavity it is again a paired gland it is compound acinar gland when we say compound acinar gland we mean that the secretory portion comprises of secretory tubules there are different tubules and the distal portion of the gland that is the farther portion of the gland it comprises of system of uh, narrow branches of the duct with acini or alveoli opening into them and then the gland with such a structural arrangement is referred to as compound acinar gland it is smallest of the three gland salivary gland parotid submandibular and sublingual it is present in the floor of buccopharyngeal cavity below the tongue this is again mcq question from this gland arises six to eight ducts called duct of ravenous or bartholin's duct as we had already discussed it to be a compound acinar gland therefore from this gland arises six to eight duct and these duct are known as duct of ravenous or bartholin's duct this is again mcq question it open bel below the tongue on the floor of the buccopharyngeal cavity and it is supplied by seventh cranial nerve this is again mcq question the second digestive gland we'll be discussing today is the gastric gland it is usually present in stomach these are tubular glands uh, tubular glands when we say tubular glands these have straight duct opening with branched cluster of secretory gland as we can see here they are present in the mucosal lining of the stomach and they are important because our stomach has hcl being produced in it and to prevent the corrosive nature of hcl on the walls of stomach these tubular glands produce secretions which prevent the damage of the corrosive nature of hcl it includes three cells the peptic cells auxinitic cell and goblet cells talking about the peptic cells these are also known as chief cells or the zymogen cell this is a very important mcq question they produce two proenzymes or zymogen cells when we say proenzyme we mean a group of protein that displays no catalytic activity but are transformed into enzymes 
directly into enzymes they have got no catalytic activity they are known as pro enzyme or zymogen and since they produce zymogen the name it has got is zymogen cells so the two zymogen it produce are pepsinogen and prerenin so pepsinogen it is basically an endopeptidase it is an endopeptidase and the function of this endopeptidase is to break down protein into simpler form the second zymogen it produce is prerenin this prerenin is the precursor of of renin and an enzyme which is gastric lipase when we say gastric lipase it is enzyme that catalyze the hydrolysis of fats or basically lipids auxinitic cell also known as the parietal cell this is again mcq question cells secrete hydrochloric acid so the basic function of auxinitic cell is to secrete hydrochloric acid and castles intrinsic factor which is essential for absorption of vitamin b12 this is very important mcq question that uh what is the function of castles intrinsic factor and which of the cells in gastric gland secretes castles intrinsic factor so the answer is auxinitic cell goblet cell these are also known as mucus neck cells and they secrete mucus stomach produce about 2 to 3 liters of gastric juice per day again this is mcq question pyloric stomach that means we are talking about this part the pyloric part the pyloric stomach have two types of cell g cells that secrete gastrin and argentafin cell that produce serotonin and stomatostasin so stomatostasin is a growth hormone inhibiting hormone whereas uh, your serotonin it is important for maintaining mood swings it is also feel good hormone mucus of the digestive juices protect the stomach wall against corrosive action of hcl and pepsin so we had already discussed what is the basic function of gastric gland it is uh, to secrete digestive juices and uh, their mucus protects the stomach wall against the corrosive action of hcl and pepsin semi solid food mixed with gastric juices by churning movement of its muscular wall and stomach is called chyme whereas similar thing the semi solid food mixed with saliva in oral cavity was known as bolus and here uh, in stomach when the semi solid food gets mixed with the gastric juices by churning movement it is referred to as chyme this is a very important mcq question so hcl provides acidic ph of 1.2 to 3 which is extremely acidic ph this medium activates pepsinogen and prorenin and converts ferric into ferrous iron which is important for iron absorption so this is again mcq question which of the following facilitate iron absorption it is the ferrous iron achlorhydria which is also known as a condition wherein there is absence of hcl here there is absence of hcl especially in condition where uh, there is infection by h pylori or hypothyroidism it results in iron deficiency anemia gastrectomy which is a surgical procedure wherein a part of stomach or whole stomach 
is removed surgically leads to loss of intrinsic factor causing pernicious anemia because it is important for uh, vitamin b12 absorption so if it will not be there it will cause pernicious anemia which is due to deficiency of vitamin b12 the third digestive gland we'll be talking about today is pancreas it is the second largest gland after liver yellow colored 12 to 15 cm long it is a compound racemos gland when we say a uh, compound racemos gland we mean a gland by compound racemos gland we mean a gland with each where each secretory unit has sac like form and lumen so when there is a structural arrangement like this it is known as a compound racemos gland it is present in the loop of duodenum made up of head body and tail it is it is a heterocrine gland when we say heterocrine gland heterocrine gland means it is both endocrine as well as exocrine that means it is secreting its secretions or it synthesizes substance directly into the blood as well as in the cavity glandular cells secrete the pancreatic juices which is drained by pancreatic duct which joins the bile duct liver and pancreas act as endocrine and exocrine gland and gallbladder act as a storage organ this we had discussed why it is known as a compound racemos gland because the liver and pancreas and the gallbladder they are acting in a, a functional uh, way that your liver and sa and pancreas they are acting they are secreting certain secretions wherein they are where they are stored in gallbladder since it acts as both endocrine and exocrine gland it is also known as mixed compound gland this is a very important mcq question which of the following is mixed compound gland so it's so the answer is pancreas exocrine part major part of the pancreas that is 99% of the pancreas is exocrine in nature it consists of rounded lobuli which are also known as acini the digestive juices is carried by main pancreatic duct which is also known as this main pancreatic duct is also known as the duct of wirsing this is very important mcq question which is the main pancreatic duct it is the duct of wirsing into duodenum through hepato pancreatic ampulla called ampulla of waiter ampulla of waiter so what is ampulla when we say ampulla we refer to a sac like arrangement and in latin it means this word ampulla means flask whereas waiter is a enlarged it is an enlarged duct from either liver and pancreas at a point where they enter small intestine then there is also presence of accessory pancreatic duct which is also known as the duct of santorini sometimes leads directly into the 
duodenum. 1200 to 1500 ml of pancreatic juice is produced per day. This is very important MCQ question. And the pH of pancreatic juice is 7.8 to 8.4, which is basic in nature, slightly basic in nature. It is considered as complete digestive juice. Very important MCQ question because it contains enzyme which are essential for breakdown of all type of nutrients. So it is known as complete digestive juice. The exocrine part, this part, it constitute about 1% of the pancreas. It is also known as the islets of Langerhans. It is very important MCQ question. It lies scattered in the exocrine part and secrete insulin and glucagon. Now, insulin, it is a peptide hormone. It is hormone which is essential for, metabol for regulating the metabolism of uh, carbohydrate, fats and protein whereas glucagon is a peptide again it's a peptide hormone which helps to raise the concentration of which helps to raise the concentration of glucose and fatty acids So this is very important. Which are the two hormones secreted by islets of Langerhans? They are insulin and glucagon. Functions of pancreas. The endocrine part, they have specialized cell called islets of Langerhans and secrete hormones like we read insulin and glucagon. Alpha, beta and gamma cell producing glucagon, insulin and stomatostasin. Stomatostasin, it is a growth hormone inhibiting hormone it is a growth hormone inhibiting hormone and it is a peptide hormone again and regulates the endocrine system and also affect the neurotransmission and cell proliferation the exocrine part has group of cells called SNR cells which secrete pancreatic juices it is carried by pancreatic duct into the Duodenum. The pancreatic juices contains three proenzyme, trypsinogen, which is uh, it is produced. It is an enzyme which is although produced in pancreas, but is released in small intestine. It is converted. This trypsinogen is converted later into trypsin, and uh, it starts the process to break down protein into building blocks, which are also known as amino acid the third proenzyme is chymotrypsinogen it is an inactive precursor of the chymotrypsin which break down protein into smaller peptide and chymotrypsinogen is a simple uh, polypeptide chain which is constituting of about 245 amino acid residue The last proenzyme is the procarboxypeptidase, protease enzyme that hydrolyze a peptide bond at the carboxy terminal. So the basic function is to hydrolyze a pepti peptide bond at the carboxy terminal with other several enzyme which helps in protein digestion. The fourth gland we'll be discussing of the digestive gland is the hepatic gland which includes liver it is the largest gland mcq question it weighs about uh, 1.5 kgs it is reddish brown gland it is present in the posterior concavity of the diaphragm in right upper part of the abdomen it is a multi lobulated gland because there are different lobes in this gland the two main lobes are the larger lobes, larger 
right sorry this is right and smaller left lobe the two smaller lobes will constitute about quadrate and chordate lobes so this is again mcq question uh, which of the following are smaller lobes so quadrate and chordate lobe are the smaller lobes covered by outer serous capsule and inner glissens capsule so glisten ca capsule is basically a dense fibrous connective tissue that is glissens capsule this is very important mcq question liver is covered by a serous capsule out uh, on outside by a serous capsule and inside by glissens capsule it consists of two lobe the right lobe and the left lobe and smaller the right lobe is further divided into uh, right lobe proper chordate and chordate lobe the right and left lobe are separated by falciparum ligament this is very important mcq question what divides right and left lobe the answer is falciparum ligament this thing right and left hepatic duct joins to form common hepatic duct the right and the left hepatic duct which comes from the respective areas they join to form a common hepatic duct hepatic duct joins the cystic duct and the cystic duct is coming from gallbladder this is the anterior view from the front and this is the posterior view of liver from behind the cystic duct and common hepatic duct joins to form when they both join they form a common bile duct or ductus choleodocus this is very important mcq question the cystic duct and the common hepatic duct joins to form which duct it is the ductus choleodocus bile duct passes downwards to join the main pancreatic duct which opens over the ampulla of waiter into duodenum this opening is guarded by the sphincter of odi so this is pancreatic duct and this is common bile duct when they come together for opening into the duodenum this is duodenum here it is guarded by a sphincter of odi before bile duct joins the pancreatic duct that means here it is surrounded by a sphincter of boyden this is very important mcq question rat and horses do not have gall bladder hepatic lobules are structural and functional unit of liver this is very important mcq question what is the structural and functional unit of liver they are hepatic lobules containing hepatic cells arranged in cord like form so they are arranged in cord like form radially coming towards the center or deviating from the center radially each lobule is covered with thin connective tissue called glissens capsule as we had already discussed it is a dense connective fibrous tissue each lobule has plates of polyhedral see each plates have polyhedral these polyhedral cells so these have plates of polyhedral glycogen rich hepatocytes arranged radially around the central hepatic vein so this uh, the arrangement lies around the central hepatic vein each row of hepatocyte is called hepatic cord this is very important mcq question what are hepatic cords radial blood sinusoids are present between the plate each plate is divided by the other with the presence of blood sinusoids at the periphery of the lobules the branch of portal vein this is a branch of a portal vein a hepatic artery this is a hepatic artery bile duct and lymphatic course together forms the portal triad this is very important what are the constituents of portal triad these three the hepatic artery bile duct and a branch of portal vein along with the lymphatic course they form portal triad 
a network of tubular spaces these spaces which are present between the hepatocyte represents the bile canaliculi the sinusoids are lined by incomplete endothelium with scattered phagocytic kaffir cells so here somewhere here around the blood sinusoid they are lined by incomplete endothelium with scattered phagocytic cells and here they are known as kaffir cells so the phagocytic cells of liver are referred to as kaffir cells these are very important mcq question gall bladder present on the lower surface of the right liver thin walled pear shaped stores bile secreted by bile duct which is made by joining of cystic duct from gall bladder and a common hepatic duct from different liver lobes bile duct and pancreatic duct join to form hepato pancreatic duct near the duodenum so these two joins to form a hepato pancreatic duct near the duodenum this duct opens up in duodenum and are guarded by sphincter of odi so here is the presence of sphincter of odi functions of liver it secretes bile which is a complex watery fluid containing bile salts very important mcq question what are bile salt it is sodium thiocolate sodium glycocolate and sodium carbonate these three combines to form bile salts whereas bile pigments there are two bile pigments biliverdin and bilirubin cholesterol mucin lecithin and phospholipids etc it contains no digestive enzyme so this is very important there are no digestive enzyme in liver bile juice breaks an emulsified fat so bile juice what is the basic function of bile juice it breaks and emulsifies the fat the daily secretion of the bile is 500 to 1000 ml liver is the site for various metabolic event like the hemoglobin for from uh, the worn out rbcs they are converted into bilirubin and biliverdin and then they release stereobilin which is the color of the feces it is the color of the feces also it is a site for glycogenesis these are mcq question it is the site of glycogenesis what is glycogenesis the process of conversion of excess glucose into glycogen is referred to as glyco genesis it is also a site for glycogenolysis what is glycogenolysis it is the process of conversion of glycogen into glucose it is a major site for uh, gluconeogenesis and what is gluconeogenesis it is the process of proteins and fat to be converted into glucose liver is also a site for lipogenesis which is the process of conversion of excess glucose into fat liver do act as a major site for transamination and deamination of amino acid when we say transamination it is a process by which amino groups are removed from amino acid and transferred to a septer keto acid to generate the amino acid version of uh, keto acid and keto acid version of originally amino acid so that process is known as transamination deamination it is the removal of amino group from the molecule is referred to as deamination bile activate lipase enzyme so it is important because it activates the lipase enzyme in embryo rbcs are manufactured in liver so this is very important mcq question in embryo where are rbcs being manufactured they are manufactured by liver in adults liver store inorganic salt of iron copper and vitamin b12 and helps in formation of rbcs and hemoglobin fibrinogen prothrombin and other blood coagulation factors are formed in liver very important mcq question where are fibrinogen prothrombin 
and some of the coagulation factors are formed they are formed in liver heparin is secreted by liver again a uh, blood coagulating substance anti coagulating substance it is heparin plasma protein serum albumin and serum globulin are synthesized by liver which are important for antibody formation help fight diseases liver synthesis synthesizes vitamin a from pro vitamin a that is inactive form of vitamin a which is a carotenoid pigment liver cells store fat soluble vitamin so fat soluble vitamin are a d e and k so all the fat soluble vitamins are stored in liver it is a site for detoxification as we had already discussed it to be a major site for deamination reaction so it helps in detoxification by removal of amino group tougher cells which are the phagocytic cells in liver phagocytose remove bacteria worn out blood cells and foreign particles so this is the function of tougher cells in liver it is also a site for lymph formation produces angiotensinogen which is a protein which helps the kidney maintain blood fluid levels by osmoregulation finally the digestion is completed by enzymatic secretion of hepatic ck and midgut lining which possess trypsin and erypsin which are important for uh, hydrolyze hydrolyzing the protein into amino acids with the presence of lipase which are helpful to digest fat into fatty acids and glycerol with the help of invertase maltase and lactase which are essential to digest the carbohydrate like sucrose maltose and lactose most of this action take place in midgut the lining cells of ck absorbs the glucose only water and minerals are absorbed in hindgut this is this is very important the lining cells of the ck they absorb glucose but only water and minerals are absorbed in hindgut finally the undigested food or feces are expelled out through anus in the form of almost solid palate this is it for today's lesson